So what triggers the inflammatory response? Well, it really comes down to cells. So we're gonna look at three main kinds of cells that all um, are important in triggering uh, leaky blood vessels, which are what the inflammatory response are all about. So I'm gonna show you these three white blood cells and I want you to see if you can think of what type each one is. Two of them have bilobed nuclei. One of them has red granules. One of them has purple granules. Actually, two of them have purple granules. And what are they? Well, these ones have granules that are basic loving, and so they stain a, with a basic dye. So we call them basophils. And then you might remember that mast cells are very similar to basophils, but these are found in mucous membranes, and these are found circulating in the bloodstream. And eosinophils, oops, I'm going to use a pink for that, are acid loving, and acidic dyes tend to be a, more of a pink color, so they stain a pink. So, what makes them trigger inflammation? It is a few things that can, can activate them. One of those things is. Um, the, the presence of the pathogen. So if the white blood cell comes into contact directly with one of these um, pathogens that might be in your body, then it will be activated to release histamine. Or sometimes your own damaged host cells will give off SOS single, signals. And um, also, once the immune system adaptive immunity gets underway, uh, T cells can actually feed back. So remember, those are lymphocytes, and they're part of adaptive immunity. And we haven't gotten to too much of that yet, but the T lymphocytes or other white blood cells. So all three of these. can stimulate. And then once these cells are stimulated, they release chemicals. And the most key chemical in inflammation is histamine. Most everybody knows that if they are having an allergic reaction, they take something like Benadryl, which is an antihistamine. So what that drug does is it blocks the effects of histamine. So let's look at a regular capillary and then a capillary under the effect of histamine. So this first picture is a capillary with ordinary sized pores or holes between endothelial cells. You can see those here. So some little gaps. And then under the influence of histamine, Instead of saying stimulates, I'm going to put histamine causes leaky capillaries. Now look what happens. All of a sudden, those ordinary sized holes became big. Oops, sorry. Ooh.
So what's going to happen, more fluid is going to leave the capillary. So more fluid is going to leave the blood vessels and enter what we call the interstitial area or the tissues. And we can call that edema. And edema is swelling or when, the, when there's too much fluid in the tissues. Now, why could this ever be a good thing? Uh, first, let's look at the cardinal symptoms, each one of which can really be explained by leaky capillaries and see why each one could potentially be good. The area, there are four main symptoms. I want you to think about if you have ever experienced a, a sprained ankle, what are the symptoms? Or if you ever hit your finger uh, with a hammer. The area is red, Let, right? It looks redder. It will feel warmer, even hot to the touch. It will be swollen. And in all likelihood, will be more painful. You could think of a hangnail, good example there. So um, what is making the area look red? Well, it's increased blood flow. What is making the area hot? Well, it's increased blood flow. What is making the area swollen? Increased fluid entering the tissues due to more blood flow and painful because it's pressing on those nerve endings. So it's red because of increased blood flow. Hot because blood is warm, warmer than our tissues. Our body temperature is somewhere around 98, but our blood is more like 100. Now, if you're a guy, maybe you're one of those lucky people that has an average of 98.6, but a lot of women might be 97.5 or low 98. So that's why I like to just put that average of 98. But either way, blood should be warmer, and so the air gets hot because the blood is bringing that um, extra heat. And then swollen fluid is accumulating in the tissues. We call that edema. And painful for really two reasons that I can think of. One is just the pressure of the extra fluid. And the other is because when there is inflammation, there are chemicals released from the nearby cells that are called prostaglandins. These are just little chemicals that come out of cells to communicate with other cells that there is a problem and they can sensitize the nerve endings and make inc and increase the sense of pain. Okay, so then let's come back to why is this good? Is there anything good about this? We'll use a different color over here. If you have increased blood flow, then you're gonna be bringing nutrients, right? Bringing the Calvary. Bring nutrients to help with healing. Also, bring more white blood cells. And then if you look um, at swollen and painful, both of those seem to have a couple of potentially good effects in that both of these are going to reduce movement or use of the injured site so that it can heal.
So bringing nutrients to help with healing, bringing white blood cells to help fight infection, and reducing the movement and the use of the injured site while it heals. So those are the reasons that inflammation can be good. It can go too far though, and chronic inflammation is actually known to be involved in many diseases. Uh, one, for example, would be heart disease. Chronic inflammation in the blood vessels uh, seems to set the stage for um, atherosclerosis and then eventually heart disease.